All right, so good morning, good night, good afternoon. So I'm gonna zoom in real quick because I can't really see. Can you zoom in? Oh man, you can't zoom in, so I gotta go all the way back. So let me redo the intro. So good morning, good night, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm gonna say this in Spanish as well. Buenas noches, buenas tardes, and buenos días a todos. Estoy de quebra navegante. Um, a todos, a para, a para de abros de inglés. Now, I'm gonna say the rest of English. So, as you can see, I'm in Port Jefferson. So you see the Osprey in the back. These are fishing boats. So they're charter fishing boats over here. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. So it's not like a whole boat tour guide. It's not, that's not what this video is. So, sea stories, right? So this is probably like the last I'm gonna talk about Navy boot camp experience. So the Navy boot camp experience and what happened was, this is the last part. So I'm gonna condense everything in once. So I think the last one I talked about, um, I didn't talk about the gas chamber. I didn't talk about that yet. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the gas chamber, battle stations before I got kicked out in battle stations, separation, and um, exploring downtown Chicago um, while wearing boots and the, the, the sweatpants and the pea coat and the beanie, so the beanie headgear and stuff like that. So I'm gonna talk about three things. So, so the first one is the gas chamber. So after we finish the swimming thing, uh, maybe like three days later, we, uh, the gun stuff has already been passed already. So, so, and I told you from the last video that like they stopped, they stopped doing the, um, the 12 gauge shotgun and just only do the Beretta nine. So, um, so I was one of the last ones that had the blue Larry's and the 12 gauge shotgun. So I was one of the last candidates um, of my division that, are, that had that. So I was the last, 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 last of my division to have the 12 gauge shotgun and wear the blueberry camouflage uniform. So we were the last ones. After the other division after us, um, that's when they issued the green uniform. But anyway, the point is when I went to the, um, the gas chamber, right? So we went to the gas chamber and then of course if you guys you guys already know what the gas chamber is is that they lecture you in a class first and i don't know about other branches but in the navy they lecture you they lecture you on how to use a gas mask what why we use chemical warfare the brief history of world war one how chemical warfare um changed traditional warfare so instead of you just shooting somebody and stabbing somebody someone would just throw gas and just like <laughs> and just kill you on the spot so they they talk about the invention of the gas mask and how Oppenheimer was making the atomic bomb and stuff like that how the Nazis and the Russians and the Italians and the, and the Albanians was like making these destructive stuff so the Americans the Canadians uh, of the allies was trying to get on board of what's happening so we went to the classroom of the gas the gas chamber lecture and then, of course, I was falling asleep. The RDC was like, what the F are you doing? Oh, get up. Oh, Kevin, hydrate. I'm sorry, Ellis, hydrate. Gulp, 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 gulp. And then, like, um, we just did our blurpees and whatever the case may be. Um, fast forward, right? So, moving forward. Then, that's when we march, 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 and march, and march. And march and cadence, march and cadence, and march and cadence, and march and cadence, and march and cadence, all the way to the gas chamber. So we went to the gas chamber, and then um, oh, what's this? Oh, and we went to the gas chamber, and then they told us it was inside of a building. So we went building on top, on top, on the 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 second deck, the floor, second deck, and then what happened was, um. They gave us the gas mask. They put us in the room. They locked. They locked the hatch. So you heard, you heard that. So you stand. You stand in formation of the tow line, and then when the tow line happened, then then they gave you the gas mask, and then they and then the RDCs was like put put the effing gas mask on. We put it on. We turn it on. We do all that um so we did all that part and then that part we did and then um then the rdc was like 
Is everyone ready? And everyone repeat. Always ready. Always ready. Hoo, 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 hoo. Always ready. So they put on the gas and this is tear gas. It's pure tear gas. It's pepper spray, tear gas. And um, I think it's like some type of pepper. Um, you know the pepper is it's, it's that you can comment down below. It's that pepper that you use on your chicken. Like it's very, very, very hot. It's like the hottest pepper. So imagine you put that in, in misty form, in a misty smoky form, you know what I'm saying? Steam form. So they have us take off the gas mask. So the gas mask takes off and then we have to like, we have to like say, uh, we have to sing the anchors away, anchors away, uh, blah, 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 blah. I forgot the whole song, but we have to sing the anchors away. And the RDC was like, oh, get the F out hurry up hurry up and then everyone was like anchors away <laughs> everyone was, <laughs> everyone was coughing right everyone was coughing you got snot coming out you got spit coming out um one one person two two people's next to me they like they they inhale it so much that like he was making a throw up sound he was like ugh, ugh, ugh. he was doing all that and he was exaggerating in my opinion, but what happened to me was I kept coughing nonstop and then the pepper spray was stinging. It was stinging so much that you couldn't open your eyes. So it was that bad you couldn't open your eyes. So we out there walked, we walked with our with our like mask on. And if you can hear me, so we walked our mask on, we just walked, 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 walked out, and then we just waved our arms like a duck. And then the RDC was like, wave your hands like a duck, wave your hands, wave your hands, wave your hands, like, like a bird. And then we stopped for a few seconds. So we stopped. And then when we stopped and then we turned around, um, then over time, the pepper spray wear off. So that part is done. Um, wasn't the most painful things ever. Not really, but it was irritating for that pepper spray to be all over you. So it was very irritating to be honest with you. Would I ever do it again? I think it may happen when I become an officer. So when I become an officer, it probably will happen again. I don't know if officers go through tear gas um, situations, but it may happen again. I don't know. We'll see on the next couple of seasons when I become uh, a, a merchant marine officer. So we'll see. But therefore, after the tear gas, now we're preparing for battle stations. During in between times, meanwhile, in between times, um, each division is is doing a marching competition. So, marching cadence competition. Um, the the color guards and and the, um, yeah, the color guards, marching, cadence. Who have the best cadence? Some people overdid it. Some people underdid it. Um, um, some RDCs they overly did it. Even though we were perfect for my division, zero nine two. So, if you guys are in zero nine two. Comment down below, 092. But anyway, so 092, we were perfect. Our cadence was perfect. It was all male division. So it was all male division inside of a Navy SEAL building. You know what I'm saying? So it was inside of a special operations building because we were from the USS Arizona. So we were perfect. But our RDC, um, one was Filipino, one was from Tonga, one was from um, Wisconsin, another one's from Rhode Island. And our chief, he, he was from um, Chicago, ironically. So that part being said, so that happened. And then when, um, when we did that, we, we went to, let me see, where, where did we go? Yeah, we were preparing all of the, um, the cadence and all that stuff. And I didn't really give two craps about it, to be honest with you. I just want the, the day to pass by quick because the days feels like months, months feels like years, our minutes feels like hours. So when you're in the boot camp environment, so remember this, if you guys are entering the boot camp or in that environment, minutes feels like hours, hours feels like days, days feels like months, months feels like years. It really does. It's Groundhog Day, the same thing. You get up, you eat, you get up and eat, you go walk around. You sit, you're look, you're staring at a wall. You're staring at people. You're tired. You're worrying about what's back home, even though home is not worried about you. Um, it just feels like Groundhog Day. It feels like repetitive 
boredom groundhog day it's just boredom redundantness that's what boot camp feels like boredom redundantness so they, the reason why they're doing it because they're preparing you for the ship life you know life life on the ship as you can see in the back of me but but in a navy ship instead but anyway um so gas chamber is done people practicing for cadences sorry if you guys can't see my face but my face is right here so people practicing for that what's next preparing for battle stations now um i can't talk about battle stations like that because they make us well they made me sign a contract that i can't talk about the details of battle stations for confidential reasons um because someone may use information to use it against the united states and i don't want to be responsible if anyone uses information to destroy my country you know what i'm saying so what i can tell you about battle stations is probably public knowledge now but when i was there they made they made us sign a lot of paperwork on battle stations a lot of paperwork we had like pages this pages of long of of contracts of battle stations that we can't certain talk about like with battle stations god i know you guys are excited about this part i didn't finish battle stations i got kicked out in the middle of battle stations so when we were preparing for battle stations at that point we already got our peanut butters already so we already had almost our uniform our all um we had our summer blue no, sorry we had our winter blues we didn't have our summer whites yet we had our winter blues the summer whites came but but it wasn't an issue yet so we had our winter winter blues our peanut butters and we had our um coveralls so we had our coveralls and we had our regular utility uniform so all our uniforms was in our foot locker and our gear locker and our storage bunk already so we already had that already now that part being said i know you guys wanted to know about the battle stations oh kevin 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 talk about battle stations talk about battle stations i can't really talk about it that much i know you guys gonna unsubscribe oh man i was subscribing to see battle stations i can't really talk about it like that what i can tell you about battle station is that think of it like this battle stations in the in the navy in navy boot camp it's like i'm gonna put it this way it's like hmm how can i put it like this battle stations in united states navy boot camp it's like universal studios let me let me be pacific if you guys ever been to six flags have you guys ever been to the superman ride or the batman ride or have you guys ever been to an amusement park that they have like a little a little museum thing they have a little museum thing and then you go inside and then and then you're going to hear an announcement right you're going to hear an announcement inside of, inside of that amusement park like they'll tell you like oh you there is a warning this may happen to you if you enter here re, re, re. so that's what battle stations was like that's all i can tell you about that part so i can walk i can walk you through what it was so as soon as we wore our coveralls, right, and we were preparing for battle stations, we went inside of the ship. I can't tell you the name of the ship, but it was based on the incident that happened with 9-11. So it happened with that. So and it happened with um, the other ship. It was a suicide bomber that came inside of the Navy ship that, that crashed into it and bombed it and drowned it. So you guys can look it up. It's, it, that's public information. So we were basing our training on that. Um, so when we got inside of battle stations, we did a lot of mooring. So we so we, we, we rigged the lines, we moored the lines, we um we we stand in a single file line so everyone was in formation. So they so we went port, some people went port, some people went starboard. So um 30 guys went port, other 30 guys went starboard. So me where, where where was i located i was located in the bow of the ship so i was in the front and then i was doing i was standing watch so i was standing watch and and then i was standing watch for like what four hours and then someone else switched me and then i went went to the back to the engine room and then um our rdc's so our rdc's broke the alarm and you and you heard like a big alarm you heard um we and then it says battle stations, battle stations, battle stations. Everyone prepare for battle stations. So everyone scramble like, like, like mice. You know how you have a box full of mice and they just spread them out. So everyone was just scrambling to each other. 
and then our RDCs was just, were just like staring at us the whole time and then then was asking and not asking but was saying like what so so what's gonna happen so me and my division our RDCs are not there already they're left they just in observance and we were all trying to figure out how to work as a team because the point of battle stations is to work as a team you can't be individual you know what i'm saying because and then the bottom of the ship and the top of the ship it broke and then water was coming down that yes real water real water was coming down and it was drown then it was flooding 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 so this was a cool experience though i encourage everyone to do it you know what i'm saying i really wish that like the military will put battle stations in public so they can put you a scenario yes you know what think of it like this battle stations like escape room imagine if you guys ever been to escape room right imagine escape room on a boat so imagine you're in the middle of the ocean or or you're you're fighting a combat ship and the ship blasts you you know what i'm saying it blasts you and you're trying to save the ship without abandoning the ship so think of it like this it's like a ship with escape room so combine titanic escape room saw the movie saw and and um and battleship in once just combine that that's what battle station is i didn't say the details i didn't say what it was i didn't say who it is i didn't say what name the ship is i just told you the public information so we went down to the engine room and then you, um you can't see this thing but we have to like unwind this thing and then we have to use a ratchet and then we have to use a a, a, a wrench to to like kind of like lock the nut so the um the water doesn't come down and then mind you all the water splashing in your face and then you're hearing the alarm at the same time everyone's yelling at your ear everyone's like oh what the f we gotta do what the f we gotta do oh what the f oh no you yo you 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 need to do this you do this like everyone was trying to like come come figure what they were gonna do you know what i'm saying so that part being said with battle stations um I felt it, so I froze. It was the most embarrassing moment of my life during Navy boot camp. I froze. While everything was alarming and everything was 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 flooding at once, everyone's all over. Everyone's all over the place. Everyone's bumping to each other. Everyone's like yelling at each other. You know, um, someone on watch is right here. Can't leave. Someone right here is trying to fix the hole that's been blown out. Also, at the same time, there's a fire going on. There's a stimulus, it it's kind of a real fire, but it's not gonna harm you. So there's a fire going on. So, so you have 20 things happen at once. So 20 things happen at once on a ship and that's too much. So it was too, it was too much for me. So I froze. So basically I froze. So I sat like, I was like this the whole time. This is how it was during during the whole exercise, like this. And everyone was like, Ellis, 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 move, 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 move. And I'm like this, I'm like. And my mind was blank. I was like, what do I do? Uh, I froze. So it was the most embarrassing moment. And then to the point that the RDC had to come in and told me, get the F out. Ellis, get the F out. So you know so i couldn't hear anything there was explosions there was a fire water is hitting your face smoke it's dark the lights was going on and off you know the lights was flickering on and off like like my mind was just went my mind just went blank it went completely blank for good i never been this blank before like, you, you know you're in a situation that you just don't know what to do. Like, you just, <laughs> I just froze like a popsicle. So I've been escorted out and then I've been separated from, from, from boot camp. So I've been separated from my division. So um, they stopped the exercise because me and 10 other people just froze. Because you're put in a position that you have to fix 10 things at once. And 
I told myself, how can the human brain, how can a human brain do that? How can you go to fix a fire, like fix a pipe, fight enemies, stand watch, and, and the ship is rocking back and forth, you know, so, and then you have a lot of noise. You have a whole bunch of noise. So I'm wondering, how is that possible? How is all this possible? So I froze. I froze and I got separated. I got processed out and I just quit. And I was like, you know, this is not for me. Cause, and on top of that, I, I was thinking about, I was thinking about my ex-girlfriend at the time. I was thinking about my family members at the time. And I was thinking about, oh, what would I do if I went home? I was, and I was thinking about myself, like, oh, this is the worst decision I ever made in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, to look back at it now, it was kind of stupid. I could have made it. I could have made it, but I had self, I, I self doubted myself. So I, so I made, so I made a whole big self doubt. I gave up on myself. It wasn't the Navy that made me give up. I gave up on myself. So pretty much, I gave up on myself and I gave up on everything i gave up on myself i quit on myself um if i would have kept fighting it through or kept saying positive things in my mind it could be optimistic yeah i, I would have been like e6 right now or or i would have like transfer into state 21 program and become um ensign or right now i probably would be promoted to lieutenant go from enlisted to officer um if i would have like kept my mindset i had before coming into new boot camp so i got separated so I went to SEPS, right? So I went to SEPS. Um, SEPS was more relaxed. So the thing about being separated from, from boot camp, no matter what branch you are, but let me speak for the Navy, is that they're gonna put you in a different building. You, you don't, it's not strict. It's not that strict, really. Um, you get to watch movies. I haven't watched movies in a long time. Um, you get to basically it is, is se separation separation barracks is very it's very extremely boredom it's more boredom than than being than being on the um on the boot camp side it's really it's really boring separation barracks is so 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 boring it's absolutely very boring because you clean the whole barracks you eat you you sit down on your rack you lay down your rack you read a book the good thing is you got to know people you connect with people we all had a common goal everyone from different race everyone from different backgrounds different economical social status has came together in, in, a, in a common goal um i never knew rich people had problems i never i never, I never knew other race of people have problems the same problems i had i never knew that um for the first time I went I went into the head and I went under I went under um, under the showers and then there was this like guy from the south came behind me you know he took off he took off his towel so he took off his towel and he had confederate tattoos so he had a confederate flag tattoos he had a Ku Klux Klan tattoo then he had like something in Latin he had like a um he had like a tattoo on his arm and across his chest in Latin. Like, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe people who, who's a part of the Ku Klux Klan or the, or the, um, the neo-Nazi people, they probably know what that Latin saying is. I forgot the name of it, but you guys can Google it. You guys know it. Um, it's, a, it's a fascist, it's a fascist um, saying. It's in Latin. Um, he looked at me, I looked at him. He thought I was gonna do something because, mind you, we're in separation. We're, we're we're out of the navy at that point. We're waiting to be shipped out to go home. So now he can show his true colors. He thought I was gonna show my true colors. You know what I did, ironically? You know what I did, right? So as he was next to me and he looked at me, he just stared. He thought I was gonna like react, retaliate, or 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 try to beat him up. But no, it was the opposite. What I did was I showed kindness. So. So I got the soap, I got the Axe uh, bottle soap, and I just gave it to him. He was surprised, he was shocked. He was like, 
I know, I know this N word does not just did that. I thought he was gonna punch my face or I thought he was gonna react. I was like, no. I was like, I was like, hey man, you want you want some soap? It seemed like you need some soap. And he was just he kind of hesitant, but he he grabbed the soap. So um, I'm not gonna say his name, but like um, but I think I think at that point his mind changed about certain groups of people, certain race of people. His mind changed. I have I have convinced convinced uh I don't I, I have convinced a racist that we're all the same. Yeah, we have different physical features, but we're all the same. You know what I'm saying? That was the most powerful moment in Navy boot camp is that I, I showered with a Confederate. A, 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 a diehard Confederate. You know what I'm saying? He had a Ku Klux Klan tattoo, the actual hoodie, the burning cross, the, uh, the Latin saying. He had um, the swastika on the side of his rib. And I just passed him some passed him some soap, and then I just conversate. I was like, "Hey, my name is Ellis," and he was like, "My name is such and such." I'm not gonna say his name though, but um, out of respect for his people, whatever, um, I passed him the soap, and then when I passed him the soap, he was very shocked. He was he was flabbergasted. He was like, "Wait, is is this, is is are you setting me up, or or this is how, or are you just being generally nice?" And then he said it with his Mississippi accent. He was like, you're really a nice guy. Like, you, you know what these are, right? Like, uh, you, you're different. You, you're, 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 di you're different for, you're different for N-word. You're really different. And I said, yeah, because I don't see race. You know what I'm saying? I see people as people. It's up to you if you, if you want to see what you want to see, but I see people as people. At the end of the day, we're all going to heaven. At the end of the day, we're all going to hell. At the end of the day, we bleed the same. That's the way I see people. Um, I acknowledge the differences. I acknowledge the things that people agree and disagree. But the thing is, I I don't want to spew division. So I pass him soap, we conversate, and then the next few days, the next few remaining days before I got shipped back to New York, um, he looked out for me, him and, and all of his buddies, because now in separation barracks, you're out of the military. So now everyone, now everyone is, 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 is going with their own clique and their own culture. For example, the people who are Hispanic origin, they stay with the Hispanics. The people who were black, they stay with the blacks. Well, true blacks, whatever you want to call it. The people who are Caucasian, that, 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 that doesn't internally that's from certain areas that doesn't really interact with people of color. They stay over there. But me, I was in the middle. I was on every. I was on every. I was with everybody. Everyone loved. Everyone loved me. You know what I'm saying? And they were shocked. They were very shocked. Even people of my own race was like, "Why? Why are you hanging out with those races? Like, is something wrong with you, dude?" And I'm like, "No. I see human beings. That's what I see." You're not going to convince me otherwise. I see human beings. It's their problem if they see me differently. That's their problem, not mine. Um, even like um, 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 people eventually revert back to their own ways. But, but even I even had a conversation with, with, with a couple of the homosexuals in Navy boot camp in separation barracks. That was chastised, but I was chastised by people who were a bit, um, um, I don't want to say homophobic, but they, they, they were a bit like, they don't, they don't fully agree with that to the point they were bullying the homosexual ex-sailors in the barracks. And, and, I, and when they got bullied, I talked to them and I tried to comfort them, you know, not like that because, because I, you know, I'm heterosexual, but, but I was trying to like, I don't know, be like the Dr. Phil a little bit. And, and then they they told me the same thing. They was like, Ellis, you're different. Like, you are a different dude. You're weird, but you're different. Why are you so weird? That's one of the homosexuals told me. They was like, why are you so weird? I was like, well, if you want to say unique, unique. But anyway, the point is, is that for the remaining days of separation, we 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 had to wear, um, they don't, probably don't do this now, but we had to wear like a yellow band on our pants 
um, and we have to eat separately from the rest of the candidates so we don't influence people to quit the Navy. Um, that part being said, when that happened, we, we were just there. And then when we uh, fought our cases and the judge advocate and the JAG officers um, released us from the, from the Navy contract, um, each day we had mail call and we had, we had home call. So home call is like, they have a big list of people that's going home. So maybe like after New Year's, maybe four weeks after New Year's, cause, cause I got kicked out, separated from the Navy around December, two days, no, a week before Christmas. That's when I got kicked out. And I came back to New York at Jan the last week of January. The last week of January, that's when I came back to New York. So they had a long list. So towards the end of January, they called my name. They was like, they was like, Ellis, you're going home. So I was like, yeah, of course I was excited. I was like, yeah, I'm going home. I can finally see my girlfriend. I can finally see mom and dad. Yeah, I'm going home. Yeah, I'm out of here. Like it was the worst mistake in my life. I actually said that and everyone laughed. So, so we all said goodbyes. And even before I got separated from, from, from my division, 092, the people in 092, they, they didn't want me to go. But because I froze and I failed the test at battle stations, they was like, oh man, we don't want Ellis to go. We don't want him to go. So they just told me good luck out there, Godspeed or whatever. Same thing when I got separated um, from separation barracks, same thing. They, they, you know, we just kept in contact. We exchanged information. Um, we, we, this is when Instagram was starting to get popular, but we exchanged information and, um, I met a whole bunch of great individuals. I've never knew that, that you had the whole United States in one building. I never thought that you, that you would meet someone from Hawaii, Wisconsin, um, Alaska, freaking Guam. I didn't even know what Guam was. I didn't know Guam was, 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 was a part of the states i didn't know that that's crazy um rhode island maine new hampshire um chicago i never knew i, I met people from the united states in one building that's crazy you will never get that again well texas they they're proud they're proud of their state <laughs> that is for sure texas is proud of their state you can't tell texas nothing that's one thing i like about people from texas you can't tell them nothing they love Texas first before the United States, you know? So when I got separated, went back home. It was a surreal moment. It was snowing at the time. So it was snowing, um, it was cold. I had my um, Navy boots on and I had my pea coat, my, my beanie. So I had a beanie, pea coat, Navy boots on, sweatpants. And I had like a, I had like a turnbuckle belt. So we call it a turnbuckle belt or, or Popeye belt. So, um, why, I don't know. I guess like, I'll explain on the nautical theory. Nautical theory, I'll explain that, uh, why we call it a pie pie belt. It's like a big, a big belt, a belt buckle. It's like a big buckle, like it's big. It's, it's really huge. Um, so, I, so I wore those, had those, and then went back home. Um, I was adjusting to society because, because I was just in society, like you're always been told where to eat, what to eat, what to wear, how to brush your teeth, how to shave, how to do your hair. When I went back to normal society, it was very, very, very surreal. Like to the point, my, my mom was like, um, you realize you're out of Chicago, right? I was like, oh, I forgot. Cause you've been conditioned to be told what to do. But because I was back in regular world, it was weird. Like, yeah, I can go to bed when I want, I can eat where I want, I can shower whenever I want to. It was so weird. It was weird to adjust to society. It was so weird, especially coming from that environment. You know, it was very, very weird. But yeah, so you guys who are subscribed to my channel, so you guys who can share this, 
those you guys who experienced Navy boot camp or the Coast Guard boot camp that got separated that didn't make it, those of you guys who made it from my division 092, congratulations to y'all and other divisions behind us, our sister division as well, um, uh, 024, that's, that's our sister division. Um, yeah, those of you guys who have made it, congratulations to y'all. If you guys ranked up, congratulations. You guys went back to school, congratulations. You guys who came out and made something out of yourselves, congratulations. Y'all can comment down below. So, um, those guys who I shout out from the past videos from my Navy boot camp experience, y'all were amazing people. Y'all, you guys were amazing people. But like I said, guys, subscribe, like, share, and more nautical content, more maritime content coming soon. I'm going to be sailing again sometime soon. And I'm going to be trying to be go on my path to become a, a naval officer as well, or a Coast Guard officer, whichever comes first. And yeah, and thank you for guys for, for the support. I appreciate it. I really do because it took me a long time to piece together my Navy boot camp experience and how to piece it in an organized format. So before I go, I want you guys to see this boat and the rural ship behind me. So, and um, like I said, guys, go on my social media, follow me on Instagram, and, and these guys are playing the piano. So, I hope they subscribe. <laughs> I hope these guys will subscribe. Oh shoot, I should have told them to subscribe to my channel. Oh well. But um they'll find it. But yeah. Good night guys. More sailing content coming soon. More nautical theory. Maritime content. Um tomorrow I'll be going to the maritime college, submit my documents. And you know, like I said, those of you guys who made it. I'm glad you guys made it. So yeah, I'm about to get going. And that is my last of my Navy boot camp experience. That's everything condensed. You learned about the, you heard about the gas chamber, um, me being separated, going to separation barracks, we call it SEPs, and um, battle stations. But in case you guys are gonna ask me, what is the most best thing about Navy boot camp, Kevin? My best one is battle stations because battle stations was the best ever. It's just that you're just tired, you're, you're kind of hungry, you're frustrated, you're kind of homesick, but at the same time it was fun because it's, it's like escape room in Titanic and what would you do to rescue yourself and the ship and the other shipmates? But yeah, all right guys, so this is it. Sarnar folks, 